In Chapter 9 of FE9, we move along the coast to reach the Royal Palace, but on the way we encounter yet another detachment of Dayan soldiers leading to more conflict. As of now, I have enough gold to make use of this game's forging system where we can create weapons with increased stats for an additional cost. But notably, you can also create weapons with reduced stats, which in most circumstances will be completely pointless, but a glitch exclusive to the Japanese version of the game allows for an interesting exploit. The critical hit rate of weapons can be changed in increments of 3, so if you take Take a weapon with a 5 base crit and reduce its critical rate by 2 intervals, you will create a weapon with negative 1 crit, which underflows the 8 bit unsigned integer that tracks crit rate, causing you to create a 255 crit weapon. You can only forge a maximum of 1 weapon per chapter, so for this map, I create a 255 crit Thunder Tome for 2520 gold and name it with a random set of Japanese characters. On this map, we get a whole bunch of new characters, starting with Mist, who is a low level staff user, and Rolf, who is a low level archer. Mordecai and Leith also join as allies units, but you can't control them directly on this map. The goal of the chapter is to seize the objective in the lower left, though there are also two villages that you can rescue in the upper left for some extra rewards. Early on in the map, Marcia the Pakistan shows up and can join the party by talking to Ike, but she's not really in position to contribute much when she joins. I move all my units to the left to rescue the villages, and then 255 crit Thundertone perform as well, allowing me to consistently one round enemies with Soren. Unfortunately, the beach is full of sand towers that restrict cavalry movement, meaning that I cannot reach the villages in time, causing one to be destroyed destroyed, but I do manage to save the other one for a stat booster. With the treasure obtained, I move south onto dry land to handle the remaining enemies, allocating XP relatively efficiently, until I manage to reach the boss who is armed with a horse slayer and a javelin. I have Titania break his javelin, but I'm a bit hesitant to let Titania be hit repeatedly with effective damage. So instead, I decide to have Mia attack the boss while healing her with mist to train two units at once. Mia takes 11 damage per hit and has 23 HP, meaning that she can comfortably survive two hits, but unfortunately it turns out the boss, Kotop, has a counter skill, giving him a 7% chance to deal half the damage he takes back to the attacker. Under normal circumstances, Mia will be left with 1 HP after 2 combats with the boss, but unfortunately, after attacking the boss for 3 damage, the counter skill activated at a 7% chance, dealing 1 damage to her and causing her to be killed exactly. Needless to say, this is bullshit. Regardless, I decide to finish off my grinding and repeatedly attack with Soren to get him to level 21, which in Path of Radiance leads to an automatic promotion without the need for promotion items. Soren promotes into a Sage, which offers the option between being able to use staves, which are useful for a variety of healing and utility tasks, and knives, which are a pathetically weak one range melee physical damage option that has no real use case in the entire game. So of course, I choose the knives. 